We've taken you with us on a number of trips to the Mississippi River. The Mississippi has so much to offer, we're back there again today, on the pool downstream from Prairie du Chien, Wisconsin. This time we're fishing the backwaters for largemouth bass with Terry Ackley. Man, he was right at the edge of that. Ooh, all right. Our first, our first Mississippi River bass, and they are tight to that cover there, aren't they? Mm, sure. Huh. Good. That's the first one. Now we'll do more. Okay. He was right tight to that cover, and he hit that worm just as it fell. But he hit that power worm, and he held on. Gave me a little bit of a chance to set the hook. We're flipping to this heavier cover here, Terry. And we're using heavy tackle. If we went, you're using, we're using, you're using what, 14 pound line? 14 pound. And uh, if we went much wider, these fish aren't that big, but they'd still wrap us up and bust us off just like that. Sure. Oh, did you see that one, Terry? Did you see what he did? <laughs> Jay, he was aggressive. He was, wasn't he? Man, he was, I was lifting my worm up over the stump, and he came up and rolled on it, and I just dropped it right back down there, and he hit it, and boy, he hit it. He wanted it. And he's not that big. Oh, in here they seem to be, they seem to think they're bigger than they really are. <laughs> These are fighters. But it, my, my worm was just dangling over that log there. And he rolled on it, and then he came up and hit it, and he swam right out of there. He hit that purple now. Purple, it's a blue fleck. Mm -hmm. Now, in the fall, on these cloudy days, you say that the, uh, the fish will turn on later in the day and get more aggressive. Yeah. Whereas if we had lots of sunshine, they'd be aggressive more of the day. Yes. Because the sun just warms the water up, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Exactly. Wow. That's a str Oh, look at that. I'm going to put my hand in his mouth. <laughs> I know what that is. That's one of those uh, dogfish. Right. Is that right? What do you do with them? You don't put your hand in their mouth. No. They're really a lot of teeth. <laughs> wow. Okay, we'll do something. We'll figure something out here. I just cut the line. He's really stuck. No, don't cut here. Look at that guy. Can you put your hand there? Shoot. Did you see that thing? <laughs> that was one of, he was that long. That was a dog they, fish? I don't think they make them any smaller. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. You get a lot of those fight, fishing bass? Yeah. Do you really? Gee whiz, he must have been, what, eight or ten pounds? At least. Oh, darn, and he, they have teeth about that long. <laughs> he, he was full of teeth. Gee whiz. And they live right along here, and they, they you catch right with the bass. Mm -hmm. Now, we're fishing largemouth bass today, and we're going down to fish walleyes tomorrow. What other type of fish do you catch along here besides bass and dogfish? Crappies, bluegills. Northern pike sometimes? Northern pike. I'll bet they hit those spinner baits pretty good. That they do. Can we go fishing these dogfish more? <laughs> he was a fighter. They look like fun. <laughs> Jeepers. Man, I thought there was a bass at first. <laughs> ah. <laughs> you said not to bring a net. I would like to look at the, that thing closer. Okay. Man, that's a lot of fish. Ooh. Can you get him? Where are we at here? You want to go this way? There you go. Where is he? Right here? There he is. Well, he was in that heavy stuff, wasn't he? That's a better one. That's a better one. Mm -hmm. Good. He was right in the middle of this stuff, too, wasn't he? Sure was. Gee whiz. Good. You got to have heavy line. You know, I tried lighter line earlier, and it just doesn't work. You got to have heavy line to get him out of there. No, he hit black that time. Mm-hmm. Is he hitting? Did he hit soft? Sure did. No kidding. Didn't hardly know he was there. You, you've really got to watch your line in some of these situations, too. That line will oftentimes detect the strike. That's the thing That's the thing about fishing these backwaters, Terry. You can usually plan on painting your boat when you get done, when you start rubbing against these logs and trees and stuff. But it's worth it. There's a lot of fish back in here. Now, Terry, you were talking about earlier the water levels will kind of have a bearing on how the fish are concentrated. How does that work again? High water, low water? High water tends to spread them out. Low water will, re will concentrate them into very tight areas because uh, the bait fish get so congregated, which I think helps create the problem, or not the problem, but the, the opportunity the or whatever. opportunity to catch more of them in one area. But, uh, now, you were saying in low water conditions, if you find one stick or something in the water, you can take six or eight bass from around that one stick, right. whereas in high water, they could be anywhere along here. 
That's something. And it works that way a lot in lakes, too. When the lake's coming up and rising, the fish will spread out across the bank, or when it's dropping, they'll hold tight on a point or something like mm -hmm. that. Same thing in rivers. Boy, he picked up and swam all the way out here. Inside that log till he was going to hit. He, there has to be one. That place looks just too good not to hold a fish, <laughs> albeit a small one. There's another one in there, though, I think. Boy, he smacked it. They don't grow quite as fast in rivers, do they? No. But they grow stronger because they're constantly fighting that current, all the time fighting the current. And they become very opportunistic in rivers, too. You can uh, you can get by in rivers with some things, maybe a, a little bit. Uh, your presentation doesn't have to be as exact in rivers sometimes as it does in lakes. No. Yeah, I'll get it. what they are, is crappies. Crappies, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, he came in in one swoop, didn't he? Okay. Well, we knew there had to be something in there, and we found out that there were. This is a good type area for crappies? Right, exactly. Yeah. What, you dip Bob bobbers? Yeah. Bobbers with little minnows. Huh? Or plastic worms, it looks like. <laughs> huh? <laughs> good. Boy, is he a biggie. He came in. There's more in there, too. I'm tangled up. That's why you're catching the fish, Terry. I'm tangled up all the time. <laughs> Ooh, that's a better crappie, Terry. Can you, is he around the log? Can you get him over it? That's a better one. Ooh, that is a nice one. I want to fish in that area there. <laughs> That's a nice crappie, isn't it? Mm -hmm. There are backwaters all along the Mississippi, and they all hold fish. It is possible to get lost in these backwater jungles, so pay attention to where you are. The fishing opportunities in the backwaters are great, and you should take advantage of them. The backwaters of the Mississippi River are virtually untapped. You'll have the entire backwater to yourself much of the time. Now, what we did is we started out throwing spinner baits around the edge of the brush. We would throw reed runners and this new black flash spinner bait with a rattling pod, which really helped the fish home in on the lure a little bit better. Keep in mind, if the water's dirty, use a large, brightly colored blade on your spinner bait. If the water's clear, go to a smaller, more subtle colored bait. After that, we flipped a, a power worm, seven inch power worm, rigged on a hidden head worm hook right into the, the heart of the brush. It was a real good way to catch fish. We caught a lot of fish.